Hello, thank you for joining my talk on securing your SDLC with a focus on tooling and training. A quick introduction, my name is James Bratzis. My current role is as a developer advocate and the head of product for Checkmarks. Checkmarks is an application security testing platform solution. We provide various security type of engines to run on your source code. That being said, uh, this talk is very vendor agnostic. I won't go into any details on the, our product itself. So this talk is on focused on adding security seamlessly into your software development lifecycle. Um, the topics is going to be why, when, and where. I, there was a talk earlier about having injections using Git uh, hooks, and I'll definitely focus on that as being kind of the best place to you know, initiate your scans um, and exactly where you want to consume these results and when you want to actually consume these results. It's very important that you don't do it too late and you don't do it too early as well. What kind of tools can you use? So I'll go into the different various security solutions that you can use. Um, I'll talk about policies and about how you as a developer can work with your application security team to create some kind of security policy to help en enhance and to accelerate your, your uh, deployments instead of being gated. You still want to have required checks, but as a team, you want to come together and actually figure out what, is, what was important to your organization and what you want to focus on. I'm going to talk about how you want to consume these results, uh, where you want to consume these results, and I'll talk about one of the most important things as well. I saw there was another talk as well from uh, Secure Warrior about security training and champions as well. So when you add in security into your software development lifecycle, it changes slightly a little bit. You're just adding another layer to it. So at that first stage, you're doing a risk assessment and compliance. So you're working with your legal team or application security engineers to figure out if there's any compliance things you need to worry about before you even start development. And same for number two, while you're doing the architecture, you want to do a threat modeling session. So most people are using APIs for your applications. What, what are you... How, how, how secure are your APIs? You know, have you identified all the APIs that are, 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 that are going to be public that, that users can use, right? You want to see design risk and design al risk analysis where you can see, hey, these methods or this function is going to be taken in some kind of input and it's going to be sent out to some kind of database or reflected back to the user. So you can do all this before you even start, um, before you even start coding. And then when you start coding, during that pull request stage is really the the sweet spot of injecting your tools, running code, some kind of sec secure code scanning tools. And when I say stack analysis, I don't mean stack analysis per se as, this, as in SAST, but stack analysis as running tools on your code that's not running yet. Then when you get to that stage four, you can do some more security testing when you can do DAST or IAST, or you can look at containers that are running in memory so you can actually see some of the vulnerabilities of packages that might be in your containers that are running. And that fifth stage is when you can inject, you know, a bug bounty program or, 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 or even uh, pen testing. So this is kind of like what you see as a software development, cycle, life, so, software development life cycle and where you should inject different stages of security. And again, you want to push it further as left as possible. It saves you money as a developer because once it gets deployed, you have to context switch out your development to fix a security bug that might have been found by the field or by you know by a bug bounty program or whatever that might be. And that's gonna context switch you out. You're gonna have to start over and go through stages four and five again. So finding everything is possible that's important to you on stage three is really that sweet spot. All right, so here's some of the tools that you can use to help secure your software development lifecycle during that stage three. So run stack analysis. You're not looking for null exceptions or pointers. You're looking for actual security vulnerabilities, something in the OWASP top 10. Think of something as an injection. So some kind of code is coming into your application and going out to, to a database or a file or reflected back to the user. Stack analysis tools in this space can find when you're not using encapsulation routines or, or uh, sanitization routines. You want to run software composition analysis. This is almost as equally important as SAST. 
So software comes analysis, what it does, it'll give you a library of all, of, or an inventory, I should say, of all of your open source packages, the package, the package version, and all the known vulnerabilities in that package. Almost all the SCA tools out there will also recommend what version you should upgrade to. It's not always usually the latest. It's usually the ones that the, the community actually recommends as the best one to use. Why is this important? Because these are known vulnerabilities that are being put into your application that other people who have malicious intent can find out, know, and then exploit. A lot of people are using infrastructure as code now. So that's the way of developers, you know, deploying your application uh, using, you know, cloud formation or whatever might uh, infrastructure as code tools they might use. So there's tools on the there's tools you can use to identify weaknesses in configuration and secrets that are being leaked. Secret detection. There's also another presentation I saw that I'm very excited to see is about secret de detection. This is crucial, right? So what secrets or tokens are you leaking in your repo itself? And just because it's private doesn't mean it won't be public in the future. Someone in your organization might fork it, rewrite the code, make it public. And in the history, it might actually have some tokens in the commits. So the secret detection to tools can look at your history, um, go back in time and making sure that not only is it in the current version that you have released, but also in the, you know, in your previous, you know, Git history that's not exposing any kind of secrets or tokens. So I talked about the sweet spot of when to run these tools. And I really feel that the, the sweet spot is during a pull request or a push event. So when you do a pull request into your protected branch, so you're going from, you know, like a bug branch or a feature branch into your main branch, you should run your tools here. Um, most of the SDMs now have uh, the ability to run a check. This is either can be a webhook or can be an a, 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 a app itself. So you can see here in, in this little picture here that, you know, you run this check. And these are things that you should determine with your application security team on what you what you want to focus on as a team. If you limit the number of vulnerabilities that you're looking for and you're very focused and you've done your threat modeling and you you work with your application security team to be together instead of as a silo, you can then determine um, what you want to focus on so you can actually deploy faster instead of being a gated a gated process. Application security engineers, you know, they don't want to be police. They, you know, they want they want to work directly with the developers. There is a concept of like the application security team policing, you know, developers. But when it comes down to it, they're just want to making sure that what we deploy as developers is secure. And developers feel the same way as well. So they're just here to help. And I and I really feel like if you tear down that silo, come up with a good policy on what needs to be checked when you do a pull request, it's going to make sure that your uh, your your Deployments are accelerated. Um, before I show you that, um, I do want to show, I did find something in, in Good Kraken. I'm not sure if it's a new feature or it's been there for a while, but you have the actual ability to check to see how that pull request went. So in the workspace itself, you can see that you, if you go to the pull request, you can select a pull request specifically and then check to see the actual decoration of the pull request. Some tools actually decorate the pull request and let you know what that result it was how that result of the scanner was. So you can see here that you know in Git crack in here I was able to pull up a GitHub pull, pull request. <clears throat> have it see the automatic decoration as done by the tooling where it shows that hey this has a net new finding or a net fixed finding meaning this this specific vulnerability was found in this pull request or this vulnerability was specifically fixed in this pull request. And that's really important as a developer because not only do you want to know if like you introduce something, but you also want to know if you actually fix something as well. So if you did introduce something, the way I recommend it is always through your own IDE. Um, most solutions support all the IDEs across the board, Visual Studio Code, uh, Visual Studio, Eclipse, and, and um, all the JetBrains stuff. And in your IDE, you'll get information such as you know, the ability to triage, some general information, um, the attack vector, as I mentioned before, you're concerned not about like a, 
no exception or pointer. You're, you're worried about data coming into your application and data going out. So usually during a SQL injection, um, you want if if something if some data was not parameterized or sanitized, then it's going to show you as a SQL injection type of vulnerability. And the great thing about being in your IDE, you're comfortable with your IDE. You're using your own tools. You're not in a, in a, in a vendor's platform. You can consume the results, determine if it's an actual vulnerability, um, and then you know, and then you can fix it directly in it and submit a new pull request and see if it was fixed. Now, big question always is is I don't know. I might not know what security vulnerability is. I don't know what SQL injection is, or I don't know what cross-site scripting is. And I, I, and I don't know in any school or classes that actually have training or classes that specifically are focused on security type of vulnerabilities. So really, it comes down to how your organization treats uh, the training part of vulnerabilities. I definitely recommend working with your application security team to bring in a tooling that can do training, or you know build up a, a, an internal wiki that can really point everyone to the same kind of results. So I want to thank you for uh, listening to my talk. Um, if you need to reach out, if you want any kind of advice, please feel free. Uh, my email is james.brosses at checkmarks.com. Um, and I look forward to any kind of questions that you might have.